Greetings all on this glorious Friday morning. Delighted that you've joined us to spend a few moments communing with God in his word and just hope and pray that uh, this re short reflection will be an encouragement for you and give you hope for today. And so uh, we're going to be looking in Ephesians chapter 1 again and looking at verses 6 and 7, reading from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us and we rejoice in it. We give you all the praise and the glory for uh, bringing us to this day and, and welcoming us into your presence, Lord, as we commune with you, as we uh, listen to your still small voice speaking to us. And so, God, as we read and meditate on your word, may you open the eyes of our hearts to a deeper understanding of your will for us, of your will, period, but your will for us, and that your hand of favor will be upon us, leading us in the direction we should go. And Lord, we just commit this time to your care and your keeping. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, amen. So reading from Ephesians chapter 1, verses five, 6 and 7. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear Son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his Son and forgave our sins. Friends, Paul expresses so beautifully for us this amazing grace that we have received from our Heavenly Father, revealed to us and made possible through the shed blood of his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent to dwell among us and who we await uh, with anticipation as we get nearer to Christmas and uh, the celebration of the arrival of the Christ child in Bethlehem. And so Paul begins by saying, So we praise God for this glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear Son. Friends, our lives uh, ought to be an ever a never-ceasing praise of our Heavenly Father. Everything we do, everything we say, should reflect His glory and be an offering of praise and worship to Him for His abounding grace which He has poured out upon all of us who are claimed as His own beloved children through Christ Jesus. Indeed, Paul says that we are co-heirs with Christ, because of what Christ accomplished on the cross at Calvary. And so we do praise God. And certainly at this time of year, as we sing the Christmas carols and songs of this season, so many of them are a reflection of our praise and adoration of God for his indescribable gift of his dear son, Jesus, whom we worship and praise. And indeed, he has poured out this grace upon us abundantly. It is a never-ceasing flow of grace which is, which is poured out upon us because we belong to his dear Son, his precious Son, Jesus our Lord and Savior. And Paul says he is so rich in kindness and grace. There is arguably no better way to describe God than to use this kind of language, this kind of description for him, because indeed he is so rich in kindness and grace that he would look upon us, broken, flawed, sinful people, and through his grace and his kindness and compassion, he would pardon our sins. Indeed, as the psalmist says, he casts our transgressions as far as the east is from the west, and he remembers them no more. That's the, the depth and the, the breadth of his richness 
in kindness and grace given to, to us. And that grace is so great. His kindness and his love for us was so abundant that Jesus purchased our freedom with his blood. Paul says that he, that is God, purchased our freedom with the blood of his Son and forgave our sins. I think it's Chuck Swindoll who says that as we gaze upon the Christ child lying in the manger in Bethlehem, there is in that quiet, beautiful, serene scene, the shadow of the cross the way that awaited the Messiah. It is that reminder that as we celebrate this season and the birth of God's one and only Son, Messiah, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, we also need to be mindful that he came for a purpose. And that purpose is to seek out and save the lost. And the way he did that was through his shed blood on the cross at Calvary. That we are forgiven, you and me, gathered here this day, because of Christ's willingness to to be obedient to God's will, even to the point of death, death on the cross. That he was willing to lay his life down for ours and to shed his blood for the payment, full payment of our sin debt so that we could be born again into the new life that he prepared for us, that he indeed died for us to have. And so, friends, we celebrate at this time of year the redemption won for us in Christ Jesus. And so many of the hymns and carols reflect this. Words like, fall on your knees and hear the angel voices. O come to us, abide in us, O Lord Emmanuel. So many of the carols reflect this incredible gift that we have received from our Heavenly Father that Paul writes about in these two verses. So friends, as we uh, spend time this season rejoicing in the Lord and all that he has done for us, and we rejoice in the, the great news, the good news, which is for all people, the arrival of Messiah, God's one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Let us also rejoice in the reality that we are here today, celebrating today, spending time in God's presence today, meditating on his word today because of what Christ accomplished on the cross at Calvary. And so, friends, as you navigate your way through this day, I hope and pray that you will be mindful of his hand of favor upon you, of what Christ sacrificed for you, and to know his love and his grace, which is poured out abundantly, the richness of his kindness and grace given for you and for me. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. For you have showered upon us abundantly your grace and your kindness, your compassion, your love, and your mercy. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who was willing to come and dwell among us to reveal your love and your character and your grace in human form, in fleshly form, that all who believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And we thank you, Jesus, that you were prepared to lay down your life for ours in full obedience to the Father's will, that giving your life on the cross and shedding your blood, we are washed clean of our sin, our Sin debt is paid in full so that we may enter into your presence. 
enter into your glory for all eternity. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for granting us wisdom for this day, our daily bread. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us through these couple of verses from God's holy word. And we pray, O oh God, that as the seeds are planted within us this day, Lord, that in the power of Holy Spirit, you will help to grow them and nurture them and strengthen us for our journey. And so, Lord, we pray that you will continue to guide us and uphold us in your love and your grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that you've been encouraged by it and find hope from it. And uh, I encourage you to share this with others, that they too may be blessed by these short reflections on God's Word. And as we are at the end of another week, I just want to remind you again to not forsake the gathering of God's people. And if you are able to, to, uh, uh, to gather in person for worship on Sunday and or to gather in spirit uh, with others online. And as I'll remind you that we have our worship service online live streamed on, at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning on this YouTube channel. And I invite you to join us as we worship together our Lord and Savior. And uh, please continue to pray for the church, pray for our church. Pray for your local churches and, and for the ministries that Christ is doing through them. Pray that they will continue to seek the Lord in all they do and to, uh, um, to lead people to Christ. And also, um, as you're praying for your local church, ask the Lord how he would have you um, support your church through tithes and offerings and through prayer and, and other means. And uh, don't forget to support your local church. They need your help now, as always, uh, in prayer and uh, in your tithes and offerings. And so, friends, I hope and pray that you have a blessed weekend and uh, that you will find the Lord, uh, the Lord's presence in everything that you do. And uh, just go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. We we'll look forward to seeing you next week, friends. Blessings and peace to you.